Hello there, I'm a member of the training team, and today I'm going to show you a few more things about the patient account. This video will explain how to set up PRM monitoring for your practice, override PRM defaults, and assign a PIN number to one of your patients. So just what is PRM monitoring, you may ask? PRM monitoring stands for Practice Relationship Management Monitoring. PRM opens automated NFA tickets and automated no-show tickets. NFA tickets are tickets that tell you that a patient does not have a future appointment. These tickets will come up automatically when a patient does not make a future appointment or does not show up for a scheduled appointment. Your practice should get in touch with a patient who does not make a future appointment at their visit or misses their visit. Their phone number is right here in the patient account. You can reach out to the patient to see if they would like to make an appointment and document any info on the NFA ticket for future reference. You should talk to your coach about setting up the service for your practice if you are not already using it. If your coach does not turn on PRM monitoring for your whole practice, having this box checked or unchecked does nothing. Once your PRM monitoring is set up practice-wide, this box turns PRM monitoring on and off for a specific patient. If this box is checked, it means that your PRM monitoring is running for this patient. This is the default setting. And when this box is unchecked, it is off for this patient. This box gives you control over which patients the monitor is tracking so tickets aren't open needlessly. You can modify the maximum amount of days before NFA tickets open for the patient only in the max days between visits field here. When PRM monitoring is turned on, NFA tickets will open overnight, about 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if a patient does not have a future appointment. Entering a number in here will change the default number of days the ticket takes to open. These tickets open up each night by default. So let's put a 3 in there. The upcoming visit window will change the number of days the system looks to see if the patient has a future appointment. The default number of days the system looks into the future to see if the patient has an appointment is 4,000. Here's an example of why you would use this. Let's say Jeff Johnson has an appointment scheduled three months from today. I need to see him before then, however, if he wants his condition to improve. I have a 3 entered in here under max days between visits because he comes in pretty regularly. However, if I just leave this 3 here and nothing in the upcoming visit window, then on this date the system will look 4,000 days ahead to see if the patient has a future appointment. Well, he does have a visit 3 months from now, so the system will not open an NFA ticket if I leave the upcoming visit window blank. Now if I put a 7 in this field, it changes the number of days that the system will look after the max days have been reached to see if the patient has a future appointment from 4,000 days to 7 days. Let's click Save. It will see next week that Jeff Johnson does not have an appointment between today and March, so it will open an NFA ticket. Alright, now that we have the patient's visits monitored so that we can keep them coming in, Let's go over how you can set up the system so that patients can check themselves in for a visit. Now what do you do if you want patients to be able to log themselves in at a kiosk? Patients can log themselves in at your kiosk with a PIN or a barcode. You can enter in a PIN number or barcode using the Manage Barcodes button in the Patient Info tab. Click the Manage Barcodes button, then Add, and enter a number of your choosing to assign a PIN number to the patient. Or, if you are using a scanner and key tags, you can scan the key tag assigned to the patient. They can then use this PIN number or key tag to log in at a kiosk like this. This PIN number or barcode can also be used for provider room check-ins. Each patient should have their own unique PIN number to avoid checking in the wrong person or bringing up another patient's medical record. The one exception to this rule is that a family may want one PIN number for several family members to use. It would be easier for a family of five to use one PIN number, 
so parents don't have to carry around key tags for each child or remember five PIN numbers. Well, that's all there is to this video. I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, go ahead and click like at the bottom of the page. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.